Hi everyone, my name is Barbara. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me again. Today I'm going to show you how to import data from Excel into Google Maps and create your very own location map in Google Maps. You can then share this with other people. You can publish it publicly or you can then embed it on your own website even. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is have a data set that we can import into Google Maps to create our location map. So you're going to import it into Google Maps. So you need to know where it's stored. For example, mine I know is stored on my desktop in the postal data folder and I called it air codes. Air codes are the equivalent in Ireland of zip code in America and postcodes in the UK. All the data has to be on one spreadsheet. Just so in my example is on sheet one. It can only be on one sheet to import it into Google Maps. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to My Maps in Google Maps. So what you can do is you can search for Google My Maps or My Maps, Google Maps, um, and it is, and it's this URL that you need to go to. I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can click on that and get straight to Google My Maps. So if you have any maps that are already created, they will be here. I've got no maps here at all. And the only thing that I can do is take a tour or create a new map. And that's what I want to do. So click on create a new map, hit create. And the first thing we need to do is import some data. So click import and it prompts you to choose a file to import. So I'm going to browse for mine because I know it's on my desktop, but you could also bring some in from Google Drive or any albums you have. So I'm just going to browse to my desktop um, and in my postal data file, I'll select air codes and hit open. Google Maps will go away and we'll start to import that data into the background. So, so the first thing we need to do is select a column that tells Google Maps where to put place marks on the map, such as an address, longitude, latitude, or in this case, I'm going to, uh, I've got air codes, so I can select that. That's good enough to pinpoint the location. Hit continue. And we can also use at this point uh, a title for the place mark, such as the name, location or person. I'm going to leave that as air codes for now and I'll talk you through how to change that just in a bit. So if I hit finish, I then have my four, this is a really small data set, four locations brought into the map. So you can see that this map is quite busy. If I just scroll out, you can see that I've got four locations, which happens to be dentists in Cork. So if that doesn't suit how you want the visual to be, you can actually change the base map. You might want satellite or some of the other options. I think I'm going to use this one. That looks quite good for what I'm doing. So that's how to basically import a data set in. And we've selected air code to pinpoint the location of our data points here. Now we have our data points imported in. Let's take a look at the options we have. So the default usually is grouping the places by uniform style, which just means that they have the same look as data points, which is in this case a blue marker. What we can do is we can group them by a sequence of numbers, uh, which is, is alphanumeric, currently by the air code. If we wanted to set different labels, um, we chose, if you remember, to bring the labels in as air codes. But if we wanted to actually name the dental practices, we could actually then name them. Now, this is really hard to see on this. So let's just take another look at the base map. And we might just want to change that. Let's have a look at this one. That looks a lot better. We can see those a lot better on our map. It's always a good idea just to play around with the base map that's best for yourself, depending on your needs um, for the map. So we've got those labeled. So we've got those the labeled with the name, currently still set as a sequence of numbers. We also have individual styles, and this is where we can click in and you can see this is the information here that was brought in from our data set. The additional information we actually have is the longitude and latitude, which is useful. 
a lot of people use longitude and latitude in their data sets. And if we just move along, uh, we can go to style here and we could change the color uh, individually of these placeholders if we wanted to. We then can edit the data directly in. We can also add a photograph if we want to. We could embed an image there. That might be useful if you're putting this data on your website. You can also add in directions or you can actually delete the record. So you can individually edit each of these data points in turn. Let's go back to Shannon Dental and let's see what options. What we can do is actually, we can change the icon here. So uh, there's a few icons available. Let's look up tooth. Oh, there we go. This might enhance your map a bit. We can actually put a tooth uh, as it is a dental practice. Again, that might be useful if you want to make your map embedded on your website a little more interesting. I'll show you how to embed that later on in the video. So if you want to individually go in and you can see what data is available. So if we had even more data fields, then they'd appear here. So the next feature of Google Maps is, well, what if I want to add more data in or I want to delete a record? Well, there's two ways that you can add data records in and they're really, really different. So the first, so they're really, really different and they have very different results. So the first is to manually add some data into the data set and this adds it to the maps, but it doesn't sync it down to your data set. If you remember, we went in and we imported this from my desktop. If you change the data directly in the map, it does not sync back down to your data set. So if you manage the data on your local machine, then you might want to, to, to use the second option that I'm going to show you. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to add the data, if you wanted to add some more data, what you do is use these layer options and open the data table. And this is our data set that we imported in. Now, this is a really small data set. You could have hundreds on there. You just add a row and then you can manually type in the data. As I say, this will not sync back down to your data set. If you wanted to add another layer in, if you manage it locally, what you need to do is just import another layer in. So I've got one more that I have. So I've got um, another one record uh, in my postal data set. So let's just open that up. And again, I just select air code to position my data. So I've now brought in this record here. I now can say, well, give me the name. It's Bishopstown Dental Clinic. And actually I want to give that a tooth icon like the other one. So that's now added in my extra record. So that's how to add some more data into your data set. Let's move on to sharing your map. So you might want to just have this map for personal reasons. You might have a road trip planned or you might want to embed it on your personal website. If you want to share that publicly, you hit the share button. And what you want to do is just uh, label it. So I'm going to say, so I'm going to label it dentists in Cork. You can put a description and hit OK. So there's a few options here to share your map. You can um, you can restrict it to anybody where. So this is the actual link to your Google map. So you've got a few options for this. You can share it with anybody who you give the link to, or you can actually make it public and let other, other people search for it and find this map on the internet. Bear in mind, Anybody who has access will see your name and profile if you have a picture on my maps and drive. So it's up to yourself if you want to restrict it to those who you give the link to. It might be other people that are gone on your road trip, family, friends. 
just select anyone with this link can view. If you're happy enough for it to go on the internet and if somebody searches for on Google Maps for dentists in Cork, your map will pop up. It's up to yourself. So basically you can share it or you can give them the link. And this is also the link that you can embed on your website if you choose to do so. So that's it. That's how to import data from Excel into Google Maps. What we've covered is styling our map, choosing a different type of map, individually editing our data points on the map, adding more data in, bearing in mind, if you add it in manually, it doesn't sync back to your data set. If you've got it saved locally, like mine was, I had to import one more into the Google map to add data. And then we discussed sharing your map with people who had the link or you can make it public and let others search for the map on the internet. It's entirely up to yourself. But this is the link to your map that you've created. I hope you enjoyed this Excel tutorial. If you did, please consider subscribing. It's free, really easy to do and takes a couple of seconds. I'll leave a link in the description to my other playlists. I've got over 140 Excel tutorials there for you to browse. I'm sure you'll find something of use. Hit the like button. It really does help the channel and hit the notification bell and you'll get notified when I upload another Excel video. Thanks for watching.